I've loved crows and ravens most of my life. My interest in crows began when, as a kid, I read the book Rascal. It's about a boy and his pet raccoon and a pet crow named Poe the Crow. There's no doubt that crows and ravens are the most intelligent of all birds. One of my favorite ravens right now is a bird named Moonin. He lives in Portugal with his best human friend, Sama. Stay tuned because later we'll be showing the amazing abilities of Moonin the raven. Hola. Hola. We are back with another episode of I Did Not Know That. Please like and share this video and push this channel over 1 million views. It's only been in recent years that animal behaviorists have discovered crows and ravens are a couple of the smartest animals on the planet. Take it away, Johnny. Many scientists think that corvids, the family of birds that includes crows, ravens, rooks and jays, may be among the most intelligent animals on Earth. Based on their ability to solve problems, make tools and apparently consider both possible future events and other individuals' states of mind. The Gulf News Science Section Unfortunately, for a long time, they were given a bad rap. People associated crows and ravens as omens of doom, like a black cat. For example, if you see a group of geese, you would say, hey, there's a flock of geese. A gathering of cows is called a herd, but a group of crows is called a murder of crows. A group of ravens is called a conspiracy or an unkindness of ravens. And if crows or ravens form a group to deal with a threat, they're called a mob. How did they both end up with such negative names? Like humans, they are omnivores which gives them a great advantage for survival over other animals because they'll eat almost anything. You may have seen them pulling things out of the garbage can or eating animals that have been hit by cars. They're kind of nature's garbage men. So over the course of history, when there have been great battles, guess who comes around to help clean things up afterward? Because of this, people began associating crows and ravens with death and assigning them human traits. That's how those negative names got started. Oh, Drot, there's a raven. Death is on the way. But the tide seems to be turning as far as their reputation. Because of their intelligence, crows are being trained to collect cigarette butts in some places in exchange for food. 4.5 trillion cigarette butts are tossed on the ground each year, and they are said to be the most littered item on the planet. But now some crows drop off butts in this device, and in exchange they get a tasty treat. Crows are known to be great at passing on information to other crows, and so other crows may learn from watching their example. And in France, they've also combined the crow's intelligence with its love of food. What do you do when you have a park full of litter? You make a deal with the crows. You give them food every time they pick up and throw away trash. Speaking of trash, let's look at how a crow handles some food in a plastic container. They are excellent problem solvers, and this one wants what's inside that box. Hey, can you move out of the way, buddy? You're kind of blocking the shot. Thanks. Watch as he works and works at that latch on the plastic container until he pops the latch and then holds it down and pulls it open for his hard-earned reward. Before we go any further, there are many people who think that crows and ravens are the same bird. While they are closely related, there are some differences. Let's see what biologist Alan Strong from the University of Vermont has to say about that. A common question that I get is, how do you tell an American crow from a common raven? You get a relatively good look at, that, at them is by the pattern of the tail. Second is the size of the two species. So American crow is about a third smaller than the common raven. Um, common ravens much larger and 
Um, they've got a much thicker bill than the, than the American crow. Finally, and perhaps most easily, is their vocalizations. So the American crow kind of gives the standard. The common raven, though, makes a lot of really odd calls, almost, you know, croaks and screams, um, just a lot of different vocalizations. Um, things like... So that's really the easiest way to tell these two species apart. Here we see Moonen deciding that saying hello wasn't good enough. So he realized that speaking into a tube gives him a type of microphone. Hola. Hola. Let's learn a bit about Moonen the Raven. He was a captive bred raven. In 2016, he was eight months old and ended up with Sama after his original owner couldn't care for him anymore. What was supposed to be a temporary situation turned into a permanent one. Despite having no experience with ravens, she worked diligently to learn how to care for him and has done an amazing job. He's become very healthy and a happy boy. Incredibly, Sama has taught him all his colors, how to count and associate numbers with quantities, associate images and objects, and he knows the difference between left and right and many other things. Some scientists believe ravens to be as smart as a seven-year-old human child. If you'd like to see more video and photos of Moonin, visit his Facebook page called Moon in Raven. I'll post the link below. Crows and ravens <laughs> love to verbalize and play around with sounds. Here's one that landed outside someone's balcony and you can hear it experimenting with its voice and with sounds. Now, this raven is very concerned about those who visit him. You all right, Bones? I'm all right, you all right? You all right? I'm all right, you all right? You all right? <laughs> Let's check in on Moonen. Are you all right? <laughs> Oh no, you have a terrible <laughs> cough and probably a sore throat. Does it hurt much? I suppose you caught it from some other animal around here. Who do you think it was? Oh, the dog, I should have known. We know crows and ravens are super smart. This crow grabbed someone's credit card Good thing he hasn't yet figured out how to use it. Give him some time. Now, let's close this episode taking one more look at Moonen, that incredible raven. Sama loves to challenge Moonen with puzzles and difficult tasks. In this one, she puts some food in a bottle, screws the top on, and then puts the bottle in a box. Let's see if Moonen is up to the challenge to get his treat. He has the box open, but without hands, how is he going to twist the top off that bottle?
Okay, incredibly, he twisted off the top, but that treat is still inside the bottle. Well done, Moonin. You deserve that treat. Nice of you to turn in that bottle cap, too. Well, that wraps up another episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Did you learn anything new about ravens and crows? Post your comments below.